Now, what stinks it up is Triple H sitting in a chair. You know, we are an action show, sitting in a chair, stationary, cutting a promo for nine hours with no charisma. That kills a show. That makes me never. I mean, I have jokes of like, you know, oh, Triple H is on, I'll vacuum my house. You know, oh, he's still on, I'll mop the floors. Oh, he's still on, let me clean the toilets. Why even sit there and watch a show? So that made me sick. Someone should tell whoever's in charge over there that Triple H isn't cutting it. Oh, it's him. Oh, it's him. Let's talk about Triple H. Okay. He's become kind of interesting, hasn't he? Yeah, well, I haven't, you know, kept up with his career since, you know, 2005-ish, mm -hmm. when, I, when I got booted out. Yeah, 2001, I have to turn to my researchers there. He's already with Stephanie, right? That was in 2000, I think they hooked up. So, yeah, you're right. What's the backstage yeah. like? What's the perception of Triple H now? Does it all change? Yes. Yeah. Triple H, actually, you know, I sat in the locker room with a weeping Joni, you know, because she was... You mentioned that, you know, was Triple H and Stephanie, were they really an item or was it a storyline or, well, as the storyline developed and they were dating and then got married and Test was involved and all that, um, it started that they, I guess, were working together so much, you know, that they fell in love. So Joni got the shaft because she really dug that guy as her man. And um, so she was really distraught, even though she did the Playboy spread and you know was now being looked at as a woman because of her latino heat angle and you know she really got to redevelop her character and i thought she looked awesome I mean, it was the best she ever looked and she just had such razzle dazzle and the fans dug her as a good guy and it was just you know and we had two shows i mean go work on the other show if you can't stand your guy dating mm -hmm. this other girl but she was really distraught about it and I think that's when her contract came up or something, and she went in and, and just thought, well, I'll shoot for the hilt and I'll ask for tons of money, and they didn't want to renew her for that much, right. evidently, is right. what I hear. And so she left to mm. be a, a star. So, um, but I told her when she was weeping and crying, I said, listen, and you know, this is someone now that's, you know, you, you don't really think of as a friend, but here she's now being a girl. Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, you know what this place is like. And would you want to be here in 10 more years doing the same old thing? You've done so much here. Move on. Go. Do something else. And just remember that because Triple H is now with Stephanie, they're stuck. He's going to be doing this for the rest of his freaking life. Now, that might be something he wants to do, and mm. that's great. You know, he's found his spot because he can do no wrong now. Now two things to think about. And I used to tell the Stevie Richards too. And anyone who would ask me, I'd say, one, do you want to be here forever or go do other things? Or, and two, do you really want to work under Triple H with Stephanie? Do you want to work with Triple H McMahon? What's going to be in store for your career? Is it going to be fun here? No. So, you know, I think we all collectively had um, a really great run. We were there at a super great time. Some people there, you know, that were before me, lots of the guys, I mean, God, they, that was the best time. But thereafter, I think it just got to be the pits. All right. We, well. had, a, we had a really fun um, wrestler's court involving Triple H when he became, I guess it must have been around that time, um, when Triple H, you know, was kind of, uh, Stone Cold was kind of out by then, right? Wasn't he kind of m starting to... Get, Misbehave or Not something? in 2001, I don't think. He's still when active was it? in 2001. A little later than that. Yeah. yeah, okay, a little later than that. But he was, Triple H was definitely vying for his, you know, upper card spot. I mean, he's always been, you know, the upper card player. But he was really, you know, you just could always see him seething around Stone Cold and Rock. It's like, where's my, you know, I want to have it. So anyway, then in my perception anyway. And, uh, so, and of course Undertaker too is one of those big guys, right? So we had a wrestler's court. It was when we had the first batch of divas in. And um, <laughs> the girls, I think I must have been, well this must have been later, because I was doing experience, I think. Yes, this was way later. Yeah. 
but Triple H um, decided he was. We, we, the, the divas got brought to court on the charges that they lost, legitimately lost in dodgeball on a pay per view against the divas. And this must have been, I guess, the second or third batch of divas, mm. new divas, bikini girls. So um, they, the wrestlers, thought that this was just horrible and a real admonishment to you know women as athletes, and they made a big deal out of it. So Molly Holly came to me, and I got together with everybody for just pay-per-views because I was doing WWE experience. And she came running to me at a pay-per-view, and she said, we need an attorney. We need a defense attorney. Will you be our attorney? And I said, sure, yeah, I'd love to. What's the deal? What's the charge? What's happening? So they filled me in, and um, they had an actual defense, uh, kind of a ruse they were going to wanted me to pitch. So. The funny thing, though, is that Triple H decided he was going to be the judge. And, of course, that's always Undertaker. So that right there set a precedence to, oh, this is like a, a different kind of, it's like Judge Judy. You know, this is a TV version of Wrestler's Court, you know? Plus, what a stupid trumped-up charge. It was just silly. It was kind of like, well, I don't know why the cameras weren't in there. Mm -hmm. I wish they were, though, because mm -hmm. it was one of my highlights of my career. So we had... Uh, Let's see, Sean Morley was the um, other, you know, what do you call that, the prosecuting attorney? Yeah, prosecuting. And I was the defense attorney for the divas, the real athletic divas. And um, Triple H was the court, the, the judge. So what I did was um, we, we said that the girls, because it's wrestling, the d athletic, what should I call them, the women's wrestlers, yeah. women wrestlers, they, um, it was a, it was a work, you know, we had to let them win. So, of course, you know, the, the guys weren't having it. They weren't going to accept that. So we kind of got um, a bum deal. I did a very dramatic, it was a super performance. You know, I ripped my jacket off at one point, and I got to shut um, Coachman down. It was awesome. I said, I, because I was all working about, I was talking about um, the work in wrestling. I mean, how dare we even be in court to educate a room full of wrestlers about the work? It's a work. That's what we do here, folks. We put people over. My, um, my clients are the real wrestlers. These are the girls that have been taking bumps to make it on this show. Now the company has taken a new turn, and it's up to us, the famous ones, to make nobodies that don't even have any talent, somebodies. It's a work. So what are we going to do? Are we going to put them over in the ring? I hope not. Not yet. Let's put them over in a dodgeball game. It's a work. I said, you guys know what a work is? Things are changing. Times are tough. You know, I said, why? And then Coachman said, said something. I said, why are you even in wrestler's court? You're not a wrestler. You don't even belong here. Good hub in the room. Lots of laughter. I said, on that note, who's going to be the next one of you wrestlers that have had 20, 25-year careers putting him over as a wrestler in the ring. Which one will it be? Will it be you? Will it be you? Will it be you? Everyone's going with it now. So the only um, way that they tried to shut me down was they, Triple H kept saying, Ivory, that's enough. Ivory, that's enough. You talk too much. You talk too much. But it was all good stuff. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Just like women in a man's show. Once the divas start rising to the top, the Wendy Richter, I mean, Richter's, you know, any time a, a, an element of women's wrestling comes and gets higher ratings, it just disappears. Same thing with right to censor, gone. So, same thing with my defense attorneyism. It was shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. It's too hot. It's too ripe. So, we even had um, the def the prosecutors had the the bimbo divas up there, you know, to answer questions. And they didn't even know what a squared circle was. They didn't know, you know, we, we gave them questions about wrestling. They, they had no idea what was going on. So I think we, you know, we would have won, but the guys were just, it was just a ruse, you know, they didn't want us to win. So then came the time to bribe the judge. This was, it even gets better. So normally the guys would bring in, you know, a you know, case of beer or something for the judge, and that always worked to lighten the sentence, right? Well, what we did was, um, this was now back when they had rules that all the wrestlers had to go around and like dress slacks and mm -hmm. shirts and stuff. And you know, come on, you're staying at the Red Roof Inn, crying out loud. You got to walk out of there in your nice suit to go work out, change, work out, and then 
put your nice suit back on to go to a freaking dump arena? Oh, even to work out? You oh, God. You were always drive to be seen. Drive to the gym? Yeah. Oh. You're always to be seen in, like, dress clothes. Wow. Stupid. So, anyway, so what we did to bribe the judge for a, a lighter sentence was um, I packaged up a gift certificate to the Red Roof Inn, and we offered that to Triple H. <laughs> and, of course... Everybody knows that, you know, he always stayed and had been staying for years at the TV hotels, which is, you know, a nice hotel, Marriott or Hilton, or something nice. And he would never, ever use a gift certificate to the Red Roof Inn. So I presented it to him in a really humble way, and the whole room just, like, fell out. They were just totally digging it. Well done. <laughs> It was really good. Well, then you right should have had a camera in there. Ah, uh, they should have, man. Should've. Best part was shutting Coachman down, though.